We begin our report with the hazy conditions that persist in the eastern United States. Millions of Americans spent a second day Thursday under a veil of smoke from wildfires burning in Canada. The smoke was so thick here in New York City, it blew well past what is considered hazardous. The U.S. Air Quality Index reaches hazardous when the number of particles in the air is more than 301 micrograms per cubic meter. Wednesday, that number reached 800 per cubic meter. Now that air is sweeping through the D.C. area. Here's CBS News correspondent Christina Rafiti. Smoke from the Canadian wildfires made an undiplomatic stop in D.C. today, masking monuments, shuttering stadiums, and even forcing the pandas at the National Zoo inside. And the air quality is bad outside. Uh, you know, staying indoors in well-ventilated places uh, is beneficial. With air quality in D.C. at hazardous, outdoor dining was taken off the menu, and it was indoor recess for area schools. About 17,000 children in the district suffer from asthma, which Dr. Shupa Patel says makes them particularly vulnerable. This small particulate matter and wildfires in particular go really low and deep into the lungs, causing that inflammation, irritation, and airway reactivity that results in an asthma exacerbation. Tonight, more than 400 wildfires are burning in Canada, polluting the skies over much of the East Coast. Philadelphia is experiencing its worst air quality in 24 years, and state workers in New Jersey were told to come in late. The scale of this is extraordinary. The sky over Manhattan looked downright dystopian Wednesday as smog lit up the horizon red, obscuring the iconic skyline. But what a difference a day makes. I'm Lila Luciano in New York, where the air has cleared a bit. It went from hazardous yesterday to unhealthy today. That means that it could still be dangerous for people with underlying health conditions. That's why the city is giving out free masks to anybody who needs them. I think if I wear two, it would be much better for me. With young children at greater risk, New York City schools switched to remote learning on Friday. The message is this is not over. You know, it's, we might get a little respite but I don't want people to let down their guard. Despite warnings from officials to stay inside, neither rain nor snow nor smog will stop the U.S. Postal Service. You can visibly see that the air is just not like, you know, you, you don't want to breathe it in too much. Construction sites around the city kept going too. I'm outside because I need to work, but everybody can stay at home. And dog walker Monique Benjamin says she's still showing up for her canine clients. I was wearing a mask for most of my walk with Toby here. Um, I do have asthma, so I do worry about it. And Christina Ruffini joins me now from Arlington, Virginia. Christina, that's my hometown's best view behind you, and you can barely see it. Um, how else is it? Yes. How else uh, is it affecting the city down there? Well, it's interesting. As you mentioned, this is usually a nice place to take your families, take tourists, because they can usually see on a clear day a nice expansive view of the city. You can just make out the Washington Monument and the Capitol Dome behind it is completely obscured by smoke. You can feel it in the air, although it has lifted a little bit this evening. It's cooling off, which hopefully is a good sign. But you know things are serious, John, because today they stopped making tickets in D.C. They pulled the parking meter um, uh, enforcement off the streets because they didn't think it was safe to be outside. But look, a lot of other people were outside. We talked to postal workers. We talked to construction workers. We talked to dog walkers. Uh, I talked to a couple dog walkers who said their clients had canceled out of concern for their safety. But we found another one who said, no, she's still going on one or two walks, but she's just trying to make them shorter and safer, both out of concern for her and her canine clients. This is rare for all of us, but in a lot of countries around the world, this is the norm. How do, how do they handle it when this is a chronic condition, this kind of air pollution? Well, it's interesting talking to people who grew up out west. I grew up in Colorado. You're used to wildfire smoke, right? You're used to what you saw in Manhattan yesterday, the sky lighting up red. That's something I would see coming over the front range when we had really bad wildfires back home. It's a little bit different when it settles in a population center. I think also because of the pollution that's already in the air, it smells more like those cities that I've been to around the world, like Mumbai, like Port-au-Prince, when you get these, you know, kind of hazy 
dirty smoke that just settles and is kind of acrid and, and sharp in your lungs. So I actually ran into a D.C. police officer today who told me he was stationed in Africa. And when he got up this morning, he said to his wife, this is what it smelled like uh, when I was overseas. Uh, so I think people are just trying to take care like they do in a lot of over city, other cities. You know, we have a producer who's stationed in Beijing for a while, and he was telling us over there they do the same things that we do when it's really bad. And it has to get really bad in some of these cities because they're used to this level of bad air quality. Same thing, kids stay inside, elderly people stay inside. They ask delivery drivers not to make deliveries, and they ask everybody to hunker down in a place with hopefully an air filter until the worst of it kind of passes. And quickly, Christina, what do you know about when this is going to lift? It's unclear. The, the forecast for the moment is saying it's going to stick with us through Friday. It's also supposed to be really warm and a little bit humid on Friday. Uh, so not super looking forward to it. It may not clear by the weekend, but hopefully early next week we'll start to see some blue skies once again. Well, I'm headed your way, so if you could clear things up for me, I'd appreciate it. Christina Ruffini in Arlington, Virginia. Thank you. I'll get you. right on that, John. All right, thank you.